unto all who live and breathe. This is Earth, and all that we know as a species is born of it. The wisdom found in the entire collection of man is nearly 10,000 years old, and in this wisdom is found the reality that it is not. There are great stone structures found all over the world. There are magnificent pyramids and traces and pictorials of alien beings. There is a knowledge that ancient man wrote of all these things, a knowledge that we do not have today. Answers we have no knowledge of. Why are we here? What is our purpose? And what happens when we die? In this series, you will hear a lost knowledge that has not been spoken on this planet for more than 7,000 years. The missing link between the history of man and the history of our lost knowledge is finally found. In this first invitation, we will uncover the knowledge of the Great Pyramid of Egypt and the Tree of Life, and more importantly, what happens when we die. It is the Age of Enlightenment, and this is invitation number one to the lost knowledge of the gods. Out of the sands of Egypt stands a mystery, an enigma, and the greatest man-made structure ever erected on the earth. It is the most powerful symbol of intellect and achievement ever to be found in the ancient world. A symbol so great it confounds all who gaze upon it, the Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Egyptians have all created pyramids and all across the globe their works rise from the earth as a testimony to their skill and brilliance. The pyramid represented something very important to the ancient peoples of the world. But as with all things born of this earth, its knowledge will live and then die. What was so important about the shape of the pyramid? And why were they built all over the world? What were the ancients trying to tell us? And what does it all mean? All of these questions have answers, and all of our desires to find them can be fulfilled. They can all be found in one stone, one land, and in one place. The land of Egypt. It rises from the earth and claims dominion over a man in his lands. It stands as a testimony to the stars of heaven and also a testimony to the continuing legacy of intellect lost. The Pyramid of Egypt is the most recognizable stone structure in the world and it is called the Giza Pyramid, Khufu's Pyramid, and the most enduring of all, the Great Pyramid. A monumental structure equaled only by the understanding of its true meaning which has eluded mankind for nearly 5,000 years. Today we are living in the age of enlightenment and revelation and sadly we have not even paused or even stopped to notice. All things that were once hidden from us are now coming to light and there standing in line with all the other great mysteries of the age is the revealing of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The Pyramid of Egypt tells a powerful ancient tale which will in turn answer every question we have ever had about God, life, and the afterlife. For nearly 10,000 years you will come to find that what the Egyptians are telling us is so beautiful so powerful and so divine that we as a species 
are unworthy of it. It rises from the earth and towers over all the achievements of man. It is a masterwork of mathematics and engineering skill to which there is no equal. And although there are three pyramids of Egypt, there is only one of whom the gods did bless, the Great Pyramid. It was built circa 4000 BC, and although the world teaches that it was built by slaves, the reality is that it was not. It was built by free men and free women from all over the land of Egypt. All labored and gave of themselves freely and willingly, for they believed the work that they had set to purpose was of a divine purpose. The people of Egypt built the pyramids as a testimony to both man and beast. The building of the Great Pyramid served as a testament to their great land and a testimony to the heavens and the stars above. The Great Pyramid was the first pyramid built in Egypt, and the knowledge of its purpose lived, but only briefly and only in the time of its creation. The three pyramids of Giza are perfectly aligned with the constellation of Orion, and although most scholars believe it to be the purpose of their creation, they are all wrong. The constellation of Orion is not why they were built. The constellation of Orion is only a clue. A clue measured in stone that they wanted their descendants to find. And today, we are their descendants. Every ancient megalithic stone structure created around the world wasn't created for the ancients. They were created for us. Everything ancient man created in stone was made for the next generation of man on the earth. They built these great stone structures to endure the ravages of time and the mayhem of earth's catastrophes and they did this for only one purpose. They made them for us. The civilizations of mankind will always rise and fall, and so too does their knowledge. When the Egyptians built the pyramid, they built it to tell us a story, and they built it to show us the way. And the way is in the stars, and not in the stars of Orion, but greater stars, larger stars, and more importantly, heavenly stars. To understand the Great Pyramid of Egypt, all one has to do is have a fundamental understanding of Egyptian hieroglyphs. When you understand the hieroglyph, you will understand the pyramid. To decipher the code of the pyramid, all one has to do is understand two hieroglyphs. The first is a simple square, and the other is a circle with an X in the center. When you understand these two hieroglyphs, you will understand the pyramid. When we look upon the pyramid from the ground, we marvel at its sheer magnitude and scope. We are humbled by its great and expansive reach across the desert floor. These are all true, but to truly unlock the real meaning of the Great Pyramid, you must understand that the pyramid wasn't made just to be viewed from the ground. It was made to be viewed from above. Just as the three pyramids look to the stars above, so too do the three stars above look down upon the three pyramids below. With this clue, you find the true meaning of the Great Pyramid, and unlocking its code will change the entire world. When looking at the Great Pyramid from above, you can see the first hieroglyph, a square, made up of a granite base of stone at the bottom of the pyramid. It is at the base of the pyramid where we find our first clues. Each of the stone blocks at the base of the pyramid stretch in length from end to end in equal measurement on all four sides. The measurements are 365.25 Egyptian cubits. 
And here is our most illuminating clue. The 365.25 Egyptian cubits represent the solar year counted on Earth. To the ancients, the sun moved around the Earth 365.25 days to make a year. This is the first clue. The second is found in the circumference of the pyramid, which is 365.2.5 circumferential cubits. These two references to the sun and a year will display themselves in the revealing of the pyramid. And when you understand it, you will understand it all. When looking at the pyramid from above, you see a rectangle shape with an X in the center, which divides the pyramid into four quarters and four sections. If you look at just the outer base, you will see it's a simple square. And a square is a hieroglyph which means space, constellations, and cosmos. What gives it meaning is the consistent measurement of the sun around it. Each side of the pyramid shows the sun's movement in the cosmos. The sun moves around the base of the pyramid, each side by side, and year by year, 365.25 days a year. This means the pyramid was created to reflect something that is found in the cosmos, or in the constellations of space. What is different about this hieroglyph is that there are two hieroglyphs laying one upon the other. The first hieroglyph, a square, represents space, constellations, and cosmos. The second hieroglyph, a circle with an X in the center, represents a land, a place, or a city. When looking at the pyramid from above, you will see the two hieroglyphs laying one upon the other. The view from above will show a square, which means cosmos. And within the square is an X dividing the four quarters of the pyramids. The brilliance is found in the measure because the circumference at the base of the pyramid creates a solar circle of 3652.5. When you place this circular measurement upon the X in the square of the cosmos, you will get a message. The Egyptians are telling us that there is something in the cosmos that is important to all of us. A land, a place, or a city in the constellations of space. And this place was so important to the ancients that they spent nearly 20 years building it so that one day we would know what it means and that one day we would understand. What place, land, or city is resting in the cosmos? And how do we find it? What opens the meaning of the Great Pyramid of Egypt is curiously found within its walls. Within the pyramid are a king's chamber and a queen's chamber. The king's chamber sets the marker for clues, for within the king's chamber are pyramid inches, which measure wall to wall 365.25 inches. However, it is the queen's chamber which illuminates the mind because the queen's measurements in inches are not found on the floors or on the walls, but instead it's found in its ascending measurement. Curiously, from the floor to the ceiling is 364 pyramid inches, and that is the clue. The pyramid base in the king's chamber represents the sun, and the queen's chamber represents the bride of the sun, the moon. And the moon followed a 364-day calendar in ancient Egypt. The number 364 was a very holy number to the Egyptians, and thus its usage indicates that we are looking for something that is very holy. That is the clue, and it means that we are looking for something in the cosmos which travels like the sun or the moon, and how we find it is not in its years, but in its degrees. We are looking for an ancient star which travels in a 364 degree path. And remarkably, this object is very easy to find. 
and ancient Sumer, Babylon, and Egypt, knowledge of the constellations and their astronomical charts were well known. So to find this mystery star was not hard to do at all. The star found in the search was called Enlil. And in the ancient astronomy of the Babylonians and the Egyptians, they marked that this star followed a 364 degree path. And what is most important about this star is that this star represented a god. The closer you get to the knowledge of this star, the closer you get to understanding the Egyptians and understanding all things. Where you find this star is where you find the end to the mystery of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The star of Enlil represented an ancient god of Sumer, Babylon, and Egypt. And this god is not alone. Enlil is accompanied by two other gods of the ancient world, Anu and Ea. These gods may seem foreign to you right now, but time will illuminate your understanding. These three gods represent the meaning of the three pyramids of Egypt, and they tell us why the Egyptians built the pyramids. The gods of the ancient world are not so ancient, because these three gods are still the gods of our world. The first god whose name is Enlil, in time became Elil, and Elil became Elohim. The god Anu, which means creator or all-powerful, is today called God Almighty. And the third god was called Ea, which is pronounced Ea, and it became Ea, and Ea became Yahweh. Today one of these stars is now named Moth Allah, as it is said to be the place where one met Allah. These three gods are the eternal gods of this earth and when humanity was young they came down to them and walked with them and taught them how to build and to write and to create. But more importantly they taught them of the skies and from where they came. In these ancient star charts we find the home of the gods of this earth and they are all found near the Andromeda galaxy. The home of the gods Elohim, Yahweh, and the Creator are all found as three separate stars. And each star is aligned in the cosmos as a constellation the Egyptians would call a pyramid constellation. We of our day would call this configuration of three stars a triangle or triangulum constellation. This triangle of the three gods is why the Egyptians built the pyramid and why they chose the shape of the triangle or the pyramid. Many on earth believe the pyramids were made to honor pharaohs and queens. They were not. The pyramids were not made to honor men and women, but rather they were made to honor God. The gods can look down from the heavens and see what man has done and they will know he honors them. And more importantly, it demonstrates that they remember all that they were taught about the stars and of the house where God dwells. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is the greatest altar ever erected to any god on the face of the earth. A simple and yet powerful gesture of praise where one massive stone is laid upon another even unto the heights of the heavens. It is from this work where all other religions give this same honor to their God. Every holy man from the birth of the pyramid until today would also honor their God in this same manner by placing one stone upon another as an altar to their God. The magnificence of this knowledge is tempered by an equally astounding discovery adjacent to the house of God there is another constellation of stars just below the house of God. And this constellation is the root of all understanding. The beginning of this understanding 
is found in the first civilization on earth, Sumeria. Dating back some 5,000 years, we find our first clues to the brilliance of ancient man. In Sumerian reliefs, we find pictograms of angelic beings giving honor to a very strange and underdeveloped tree. In ancient Babylon, we also find pictograms of angelic beings attending to a tree of very unusual design. In ancient Egypt, we also find the god Osiris and the goddess Isis giving and receiving blessing while standing in a very peculiar looking tree. These pictograms created by the ancients were pictures of life as they knew it. And these pictograms were not made to be art. They serve as a written record of what they saw in their day on this earth. The true appreciation of these pictograms is found in what is actually being seen in each relief. They all tell the same story of a God symbol above an eccentric looking tree with angels around it. All the pictures of trees in Sumeria, Egypt and Babylon look very unusual and their branches seem to have strange bulb-like flowers. The reason these trees look so unusual and so bizarre is because they are not really trees at all. To begin to grasp this precious knowledge, all one has to do is look for the angels and the God symbol which is always above the tree. These pictograms give us a clue as to why the tree is found all over the ancient world and why the Egyptians used the tree to create the Great Pyramid. The tree is always depicted beneath God and we now know where the house of God is found. If we look to the triangulum constellation of the three gods, we will find that right beneath the God of creation is a constellation of stars called the Tree of Life. The Great Pyramid was built to honor God, but buried within its construction is one of its greatest secrets. The secret is the fact that the pyramid was created for the gods and the tree of life. The reason the pictogram shows gods and angels attending to the tree of life is because it is where all life comes from. It is the birthplace of mankind and it is where the creator created his first man. This knowledge has been lost for thousands of years and it is the Great Pyramid of Egypt which reveals its true glory. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is replete with markers and clues for this generation to find. We know the pyramid was made as a triangle to honor the constellation of our God. But why so many stones? That is the clue which truly unravels the mystery. Each stone weighs 2.5 tons and a completed pyramid used a total of 2.5 million stones. Why 2.5? 2.5 tons, 2.5 million stones. The Egyptians were sending us a message and the message is that there is a place, land or city in the cosmos and they are telling us how to get there. At the base of the pyramid, there are equal measurements of 365.25 cubits all around the pyramid. This clue is left to us to indicate an accurate time of the sun's travel in the cosmos. The sun travels around the cosmos 365.25 days a year, and each block of stone represents one solar year. The pyramid is telling us that there is something in the cosmos that we should see and that it is 2.5 million Egyptian stones from the earth. Each stone represents one sun year. 
So in order to find the tree of life in the cosmos, the pyramid is telling us it has a distance of 2.5 million sun years from the earth. An ancient journey to the constellation of the tree of life would take the Egyptians 2.5 million sun years to reach it. The Egyptians would call this expanse of travel sun years, but we of our tongue would say it would take us 2.5 million light years to reach it. If you search the constellation maps, you will find the distance from the Earth and our galaxy to Andromeda and the Tree of Life is exactly 2.5 million light years from Earth. To confirm this conception, all one has to do is look at these Babylonian reliefs. In these reliefs, they show angels honoring a strange tree with branches yielding 29 equally strange flowers. In actuality, those are not flowers hanging from the tree of life at all. No, not flowers. They are actually stars and 29 in all. If you count the stars in the constellation of the tree of life, you will find just as in this pictogram, there are exactly 29 stars. It is the constellation of the tree of life and it is the place of our birth. It is where we were born and where we were made. The first man and the first woman sing a song of our birth and our birth is born in the understanding of our origins and from whence we've come. An understanding that has been here for nearly 5,000 years locked away within finely cut and measured blocks of stone. It is the place of our birth and the house of our God and what knowledge is greater than this? We as a people now know where the gods dwell and also where the kingdom of our Creator lives. And we as a species now know the name of this place that is found in the constellations of the cosmos and we now know it is called heaven. We have lived to see our faith fulfilled and our dreams of heaven realized. We now know the distance and the measure that leads to heaven and the kingdom of God. We now know where the throne of Almighty God rests and the city within where the angels reside. It is the beauty of intellect and the power of reason and none of these things would ever be were it not for the pyramid. A debt of gratitude to the flesh and bone and the chisel and stone. For the work of Egypt is a masterwork and a work for the master. In these days we will dream of this place and all the secrets it holds. We will wonder in the fantasy found in its reality and even as we wonder we will aspire to go there. And when the years have passed and mankind has grown and matured, we will set our hearts on this place that is found in the stars. However, when we are able to leap into the cosmos and to traverse the heavens and the stars at will, it is then that we must fully understand that this beautiful knowledge and this precious wisdom comes with only one warning. Do not enter. <laughs>